Time. We can't see it. We can't hear it. Even we can't touch it. But we experience it in every moment of our life. But whatever the experience we have about time, can we say that time passes the same for everyone? Generally, we understand time as the cyclical nature of the larger objects present in the universe. For example, if Earth completes one rotation around its own axis, we call it a day. If the moon completes one cycle around the Earth, we call it a month. Similarly, if Earth completes one cycle around the sun, then we call it a year. And the counting of time continues like this. This is how we simply know the time. But to know time and space more deeply, we have to dive into the special theory of relativity. So today, we are going to discuss one of the most fascinating topics in physics, the special theory of relativity. The special theory of relativity, also known as special relativity, has been around for almost a century and still fascinates the minds of scientists and curious people. But why this theory is so fascinating? and what exactly this theory is, we are going to explore in this video. So, without wasting any time, let's start. In simple words, it's a theory, proposed by Albert Einstein, in the 19th century, that describes the behavior of objects in motion, relative to each other. It's called special relativity because it only applies to situations where there are no accelerations involved. In other words, where everything is moving at a constant speed. The theory is built on two basic postulates known as the principle of relativity and the principle of the speed of light. The principle of relativity states that the laws of physics are the same for all observers in uniform motion relative to each other. Where the second principle states that the speed of light is constant for all observers regardless of their relative motion, which is approximately 300,000 km per second. These postulates may seem simple, but they have far-reaching implications for how we understand the nature of space and time. So let's start the explanation of relativity with the concept of space and time. In Einstein's special relativity, he created a fundamental relation between space and time, where the physical universe consists of four dimensions. The three dimensions of space, the length, breadth, and height, and the fourth is the dimension of time. This fourth dimensional space-time is also known as the space-time continuum. It is used to describe the position and motion of objects in the universe. According to this theory, space and time are not separate and independent entities but part of a unified entity called space-time. This means that an event in the universe can be described by four coordinates, three spatial coordinates x, y, z and one temporal coordinate t. The reason Time is considered the fourth dimension in relativity is because of the relative nature of time. In classical physics, time was considered as an absolute quantity that flows equally for all observers. However, in the theory of relativity, time is relative to the observer's frame of reference and is dependent on their relative motion. This means that the perception of time can be affected by the speed of the observer. And two events that appear simultaneous to one observer may not appear simultaneous to another observer who is moving at a different velocity. Expressing space and time as a single entity allows us to describe the position and motion of objects in the universe in a unified way. The most interesting consequences of special relativity are the concept of time dilation, length contraction and mass variation. The concept of time dilation One of the most interesting consequences of special relativity is time dilation, where time appears to run slower for objects that are moving at high speed relative to an observer. It is a consequence of the relative nature of time and the constant nature of the speed of light. To understand this concept, let's consider the following scenario. Imagine two clocks, one on Earth and one on a spaceship, 
traveling at a high speed relative to the earth according to the theory of relativity time will appear to pass more slowly on the spaceship than on earth this means that when the spaceship returns to earth the clock on the spaceship will have ticked fewer times than the clock on earth this variation of time in relative motion can be measured by using this formula t is equal to t0 by root over 1 minus v square by c square where t is the time in motion t0 is the time at rest v is the speed of the object and c is the speed of light in the vacuum the concept of length contraction another consequence of special relativity is length contraction it is a phenomenon where an object appears to be shorter in length when it is moving at a higher speed relative to an observer this is also a consequence of the relative nature of time and the constant nature of the speed of light to understand this concept let's consider the following scenario imagine a rod that is at rest relative to an observer the length of the rod is l now imagine that the same rod is moving relative to the observer at a high speed according to the theory of relativity the length of the rod will appear to be shorter than l this variation of length in relative motion can be measured by using this formula l is equal to l0 into root over 1 minus v square by c square where l is the length of the object in motion l0 is the length of the object at rest v is the speed of the object and c is the speed of light in the vacuum the concept of mass variation in special relativity the concept of mass variation also known as relativistic mass refers to the increase in an object's mass as its velocity approaches the speed of light according to einstein's theory of special relativity the mass of an object is not constant but instead varies with its velocity specifically as an object's velocity increases its mass increases this mass variation in relative motion can be measured by using this formula m is equal to m0 by root over 1 minus v square by c square where m is the relativistic mass m0 is the rest mass of the object v is its speed and c is the speed of light in the vacuum mass energy relation according to classical physics there are two entities of nature matter and energy they are both immortal that is matter or energy is not destroyable only one form of energy can be converted into another form of energy similarly it is also applicable to matters all these understandings give rise to the law of conservation of mass and conservation of energy until einstein the concepts of mass and energy were seen as completely separate he proved that the principles of conservation of mass and conservation of energy are part of the same large unified principle the conservation of mass energy in modern physics according to einstein's theory of relativity matter can be converted into energy and energy can be converted into matter because a fundamental relationship exists between these two kinds of entities this relationship between mass and energy was first correctly deduced by einstein which is known as the mass energy relation according to the mass energy relation e is equal to m into c square where e is equal to energy m is equal to the mass of the objects and c is equal to the speed of light in the vacuum as we already know special relativity is only applicable in special cases where the motion is uniform that is it only explains such motion where the object moves in a straight line at a constant speed if the object starts to accelerate or do anything that changes the nature of motion then this theory stops there but objects are not always in uniform motion they can be in accelerating motion hence einstein was trying to include acceleration in his theory then in 1915 he published his general theory of relativity which can explain the general cases of any sort of motion so in the next video we will discuss the general theory of relativity in details although the special theory of relativity had a profound impact on the understanding of the nature of space and time 
and still continues to be an active area of research today. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, share, and comments on it. To watch more such videos, also subscribe to this channel. So that's all for today. See you in the next video.